yes so sikkar students so today we are here we have already seen we have already learned a lot of things in class 9 structure of atom we have learned about isotopes yesterday and today we will, we will be learning about we will be doing all the sums in the exercise all the all the unsolved sum in this chapter okay so let's start so see students once again yes students first is compare the properties of electrons protons and neutrons so we have electrons here right yes sir then we have electrons here and then we have protons and we have like we have neutrons okay so we are going to compare the properties so you see first we'll talk about charge electrons have which charge negative proton have positive charge neutrons neutrons have no charge right what is the mass of proton one unit mass mass of neutron one unit mass mass of electron is around 1 by 1800 the mass of proton it it was it is 100 1 one by 118 the mass of proton we can assume that proton and neutron have almost same mass both one atomic unit right then electrons are around the nucleus and protons are present inside the nucleus then which all property we can discuss yes students so they are you see electrons are attracted towards positive charge protons are attracted towards negative charge but neutrons are not attracted towards any charge done what are the limitations of jj thomson's model of an atom anyone can tell me what is the limitation of J. J. Thomson model of an atom. Yes, students. You see, when we talk about J. J. Thomson's model of atom, J. J. Thomson's model, he said, you remember, the atom is like positively the the uh, uh, you know atom is like a positively charged sphere, and electrons are embedded inside it. Am I right? Yes, sir. right but this was the limitation of uh, jj thomson's model because we know as per rutherford model and as per the bohr's model that the protons are inside the yes. atom they are not scattered outside so it's not positively charged sphere rather the protons are inside the nucleus of the atom which is having very very less size as compared to size of atom what are the limitations of rutherford model of an atom yes students what is the limitation of rutherford rutherford model so still students if we talk about rutherford model there lot of things we told good but the limitation was he said the electrons are orbiting in the which part circular path and any particle which is going in a circular path obviously it will need acceleration to maintain the circular path right so yes sir that means it will lose energy but it loses energy eventually it will fall on the nucleus and the atom will collapse so that you know there it failed that the fourth model then compare all the proposed model of an atom given in this chapter so we want to compare all the chapter all the models right students yes students now i want to compare all the three models given in this book right so the first model is j j thomson's model second model is that the fourth model the third third model is bohr's model see students according to thomson's model you know atom is sphere of positive charge compared to a watermelon or a crystal pudding right according to rutherford 
in our atom is sphere of positive charge. In center, we have nucleus. All mass of atom resides in the nucleus. He was much better, you know, stating as compared to Thomson because it's not clear in Thomson that where is the positive charge. Okay, in case of Bohr, he was further clear that positive charge in the center called nucleus. This that was stated by Rutherford also. But then, you know, as far as Thomson is concerned, he was a bit clear that electrons are outside the no, uh, outside, uh, you know, outside, but outside what? He couldn't clear the concept of uh, nucleus, you know. Uh, but then Rutherford was a little better. Electrons revolve around the nucleus in well-defined orbits, right? Bohr further gave a very precise statement that electrons revolve in discrete orbits and do not radiate energy. What is the meaning of discrete orbits? One, two, three, four. These orbits having fixed shape and one, two, three, four, K, L, M, N. These numbers can be assigned to these shells known as orbits. So these are discrete orbits. They are not, you know, you can say that they are not overlapping with each other, right? So like aeroplanes flying in the air have their well-defined trajectories. They not go anywhere, right? So this is a model of J.J. Thompson. The empty space is like the red part of watermelon, right? And that is positive part, but that was discarded. Because here in the other fourth alpha scattering experiment, we understood the alpha particles, which, you know, possibly stroke at the edges of the nucleus got diverted. All other alpha particles, they were, they passed through the gold foil without changing anything in the direction. That's great. And then Bohor gave this model that K, L, M, N can be the uh, way we can define all the orbits or shells or the trajectories of trajectories of electrons around the nucleus. Good. Then positive charge, negative charge, that was given by Thomson also. You know, and then atom is electrically neutral. This was also given by Thomson. Size of nucleus is very small as compared to size of atom. The thing was told about this by Thomson. And then Bohr, orbits were termed as energy shells, labeled as KLM or N shells. Very good. Yes. So students, as Mansimir Kaur has already answered this question, uh, compare all, uh, summarize the rules for writing distribution of electrons in various shells of first 18 electrons. So students, who was a scientist who gave the idea that there are discrete shells was it Thompson, Rutherford, or Bohr? It was Bohr. Nails Bohr. Good. So now first 18 elements. Now when we say first 18 elements, obviously this means that 18th element will have atomic number of 18 only. First 18. We know that elements in the periodic table are arranged according to their number of protons and number of protons is what z what is that atomic number so the 18th element will have atomic number of 18 that means it will have how many electrons number of electrons will be 18 and in a electrically neutral atom the positive charge is equal to negative charge so we can say how many electrons will be there 18 correct so how they will be distributed? You know, uh, that is according to the formula 2n squared, right? For k shell, n is equal to 1 student. So how many number of electrons? 2 into 1 square is equal to 2, right? For l shell, so we'll be covering all the uh, sums of unsolved sums of this exercise, right? Okay, L shell would be 2 into 2 scales. So that will be 2 to the 4, 4 to the 8. Right? But then we still have one more. Okay, L, M shell. So in M shell, we can have more. But you know, there's a, there's a, there's a law that outermost orbit can have only 8 electrons. So 8 plus 2, 10 plus 1, 18. So configuration will be 2, 8, 8 for the 18th element. For the 17th element, 
mortality configuration 287 for 16th element it will be 286 and so on let's say let's talk about the electronic configuration of eighth element so eighth element will be two and six two electrons in first orbit six electrons in the second orbit all right students this is this question is done okay so the next question define valency by taking examples of silicon and oxygen so students now we're going to define valency just see so students i'll write here valency so this is combining power of any element you know because ultimately it's the electrons protons and neutrons do not participate in chemical reaction unless it is nuclear fission or nuclear fusion fusion right uh, normally uh, when we talk about bonds and when we talk about chemical reaction it's only electrons they take part in chemical reactions all the chemical reactions can be summarized as simply exchange of electron either sharing or exchange so what is valency students either you know the concept of valency is the result of koshish of all the elements to complete their octet all the elements want to complete the octet means they want to have eight two three four five six seven eight electrons like noble gases they are most happy in the outermost shell am i right so i've drawn more than eight it's only eight only fine so now any element you know who has one electron two electron three electron in the outermost orbit we will say its valency is plus one plus two plus two why the thing is you know it is it is easier to give one electron two electron or three electron than to accept in this case five electron in this case six electrons and it's really impossible that instead of giving one electron you end up uh, thinking that i will accept seven electron and complete my orbit that is you know impossible so much energy is needed so these electrons are known to have positive valency all the metals you know students approximately center of periodic table and then left of it they, they are all the metals and center of periodic table right of it we have all the gases you know and then they are you know kind of uh, take the electrons so they have negative charge so guys you see that uh, you know now we're talking about silicon so what is the atomic number of silicon anyone can tell me 14 silicon is 14 so what with the electronic configuration yes mineral deep core Say loudly. Two, two, eight, eight four. four. So I can say it's tetravalent, just like carbon. So definitely you will see silicon would be, you know, uh, it's tetravalent, uh, just like carbon. So what I want to say is that uh, its valency will be four, right? What about oxygen? What is, I think its atomic number is eight, if I'm right. Atomic number is yes, eight, sir. so it will be two and six. Now it has six electrons in the outermost orbit. So students tell me, will it be two positive or two negative? Two negative, very right. So uh, two negative. It's not possible to uh, tell all the electrons get lost from here. You you need so much energy. The wise thing is attract two electrons from some other uh, what. Uh, you know, uh, some other, uh, you know, elements, you know, and then make the bonding. The best example is CO2. So carbon is having four electrons available. It's tetravalent. Two are, you know, engaged by one atom of oxygen and these two are engaged by other atom of oxygen. So both the oxygen atoms, octet is complete and ultimately we get a CO2 carbon dioxide. You might wonder then how we get CO. This is carbon monoxide. So then students, you know, in later classes, you know about, uh, you know, bonding, you know, like single bond, double bond, triple bond. So this is how they are engaged. When we talk about single bond, two atoms are engaged. When we talk about double bond, four electrons are engaged. 
when you talk about triple bond 1 2 3 4 5 6 electrons are engaged so this is how engagement is done right student so then uh, then comes explain with examples what is atomic number mass number isotopes isobars and we have isotones also give any two examples of isotopes all right thank you amza thank you very much really great okay guys so now we're talking about isotopes so isotopy is basically a kind of uh, you know uh, it's a phenomenon observed in some elements atoms of some elements all the elements have same type of atoms means their electrons protons neutrons are all same whether you take 1 kg of that element whether you take 1 quintal of that element whether you take 1 mg of that element for example i will explaining in the morning let's say we take uh, let's say we take nitrogen gas n2 Okay, so let's say you take ten liters of nitrogen. So all the atoms of nitrogen will have same atomic number, same number of neutrons. But talk about chlorine. So in chlorine, seven if any amount of chlorine you take, seventy five percent of the atoms will have the atomic uh, will have the mass number uh, will have the atomic mass of tell me thirty five. Whereas twenty five percent of chlorine will have the mass number of Thirty-seven. Wow! That means the average mass will be somewhere in between. It will. It, it would have been exactly in between. In case this, this would have been fifty percent, fifty percent. But seventy-five percent, uh, you know, weightage is more. So when we take the average, we will say the uh, average mass of chlorine atom is thirty-five point five u. Okay, students. So this is isotope. In carbon also we have. C twelve carbon, C thirteen, and C fourteen carbon. Right? This is the mass number of carbon. Now this also shows that the atomic number of all the carbon isotopes is same. What is that atomic number? It is six. That is number of proton. Similarly here also in protium, deuterium, and tritium, the atomic number is same. That means in all the hydrogen isotopes, the number of Protons is how much? One. The other thing that is about isotope. Okay, guys. So now other questions are little simple, but this question is a little bit of you know like we have to do it. So let's do this also. Okay. So one second. Okay. Then we can. Okay. Uh, the average atomic mass of the sample of an element x is 16.2 u. Okay, guys. So some shaking. I have to wait maybe. So yes, average, sir. Yeah, Hana. Did you observe some shaking? Yeah. So yeah. average atomic mass of a sample of element is 16.2. See, students. 16.2 is the average atom. Just like 13.5 average atomic mass of chlorine. Okay, he says, what is what are the percentage of isotopes? First isotope is sixteen x eight, and other isotope is eighteen x eight. So, student, how you will do it? We want to find the percentage of this isotopes. So, just think how we have done the chlorine. So, imagine this percentage is x percentage. Then, what will be this percentage? It will be hundred minus x percentage. Am I right? So, how do we find the atomic mass? So, atomic mass is sixteen point two. It's given. So, this atomic mass is basically, uh, you know, mass of this species. So, this mass is how much? Sixteen into x percentage means x by hundred. Okay. Say, yeah. Anyone can say it should be plus. What? Here it is. So, eighteen into hundred minus hundred minus x. Divided by hundred. Wow! So just take hundred common and multiply by this. This become one six two zero. Okay, this is equal to what? Sixteen x plus. Yes, one rows. Can you say it will be eighteen hundred minus eighteen x? Right. So just take eighteen and sixteen on the other side. You get two x is equal to eighteen hundred minus sixteen twenty. So that is one eighty. Right. So x is equal to how much percentage? 
90%. Wow. Right. So this is 90%. And student, this is 10%. All right. We have done it. Okay. Let's do 12th also. If Z is equal to 3, what will be the valency of the element? Very simple. Student, come on. Anyone can help me. Z is equal to 3. Atomic number is 3. What will be valency? Now, number of proton is how much? 3. So, number of electrons will also be 3. So, it will be 2 in the first and 1 in the second. But if you say 1, the answer is wrong. It is 1 positive. He is a giver, not taker. Right? Okay, guys. So, we have more questions. Yeah. So, now... Okay, fine. He says N A positive has completely filled K and L shells. Explain. Anyone can explain this? N A positive has completely filled K and L shells. Yes. Anyone, students? Yeah, you just see this. Oh, we have more questions. Okay, guys. So see that it is N A positive. Okay. So N A positive. See, students, if you talk about N A, the atomic number of Na is, I think, 11. Am I right? So its configuration would be 2, 8, 1. In K shell 2, L shell 8, and M shell 1. But this is Na positive. How it got the positive charge? Any student can express? I told you. Because it has given by an electron to make it stable. Uh, well, well, to make it stable, right now forget about this part you know, because we believe that atom is stable. Okay, so N A positive, but this question, the answer, your answer is right. It has given one electron. If it if it had allowed to take one electron, its charge would have been negative. It will never take electron. Why? Because its orbits is like this two, eight, and one. You know, you take very less energy to tell this electron, electron get lost so that my output is complete rather than allowing seven electrons to come. So, so many reactions, so many friendships, so many bonding. It has to do with different, you know, uh, elements, atoms of different elements, so much complexities. No, the best thing is so atoms are also smart. They want to take the path of what? Minimum resistance to reach the success. That's what you should do. Do smart work. So they said, okay, come on, get lost. So when it has gone out, electron, you get Na positive. So Na positive, what will be the uh, configuration? Simply two here and eight electrons here. That's all. So somebody can ask you, what is the configuration of Cl negative? So it will be, can anyone tell? Cl is actually 17. Cl negative will be how many electrons? Huh? Yeah. Okay, Manros, can you tell me in Cl negative ion, how many protons will be there? Hi, Maro. Number of protons will remain same. I told you in chemical reactions, protons <laughs> and neutrons don't take part. It's only the electrons. Okay, only the electrons which take part, not the nucleus. So the number of protons will remain same. Okay, 17. Okay, that's good. So guys, uh, yeah, somebody can ask you, what will be the electronic configuration of Cl negative? Yes, Monroe, this is simple. Normally it is 2, 6, 7, but now it will be 7 plus 1. It will be 2, 6, and 8. You know, you see, chlorine has become negative. Yeah, chlorine has become negative now. Nah? We just see, Monroe, Cl is it has 17 atomic number. So 17 electrons. How it will be distributed? 2, 8, 10, and 7. That's the reason chlorine goes to sodium. Na? Chlorine is attracted towards sodium. To gain one electron. And that's why sodium is attracted towards chlorine. To give one electron. All right, students. You know? So these are the things. So hope you have... Uh, learned a lot of things. So, this is all. Well, I wish you all the best, guys. Uh, don't forget to uh, like, share, and subscribe our channel. Uh, not JJ Thompson, sorry. It is <laughs> 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 Learn CBSC. 
All right, do share with your friends. Let the knowledge expand. Keep sharing.